Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. And today we will be making ammonium chloride. Now, ammonium chloride, for our uses, is mainly going to be used to, as a source of ammonia gas if we ever need it. And um, I'm also going to be reacting it with uh, sodium nitrate to uh, form nitri nitrous oxide or dinitrogen monoxide, which is essentially laughing gas. However, this is going to be for the reaction of the uh, barking dog, and I hope I can do this. And you've probably heard of the barking dog. It, it uses carbon disulfide and um, uh, nit nitrous oxide gas, and uh, it's a very cool reaction. And uh, one of my subscribers recently commented on my, one of my videos asking me to make carbon disulfide through the reaction of car carbon and sulfur. And so I thought, well, what a neat idea would be if we did that, and also made the nitrous oxide into a lot of... Uh, a uh, barking dog experiment, which would be very, very cool. So, to make the nitrous oxide, we first need a couple of other chemicals, such as this um, um, ammonium chloride, which we will make, and then I've already made um, uh, sodium nitrate in a separate video. So, the reaction that we're going to be following today is ammonium hydroxide, which can be sold as household ammonia, and it's best to get the clear stuff, but I could only find this lemon... Fl um, lemon... Um, scented stuff, but that's fine because we're going to be doing a recrystallization and we'll get rid of all that yellow color. So uh, we're going to be reacting the ammonium hydroxide, which is household ammonia, with, oh, and I found this at Canadian Tire, with hydrochloric acid. Now this is sold as, uh, let's see, there's the English side, muriatic acid. This is hydrochloric acid with a concentration of 31.45%, which is approximately 10 molar, and this can be bought at Home Depot for a relatively cheap price. And um, this is then going to, in turn, produce um, ammonium chloride and water. Um, and I just separated HHO so that you can see how the uh, different chemicals go across. So it's essentially just water, H2O. So, the first thing we're going to have to do is measure out 200 mil... Well, however much you want. I'm going to use a 1 to 1 ratio because that's all we should need. So we'll measure out 200 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. So I just have my nice 500 milliliter beaker here. You could use something bigger if you want to make more. But uh, there's 200 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. And to this, we are going to be adding the ammonia. So we'll add the ammonia. And um, they are both gases dissolved into solution. So you might be able to see a white. Yeah, there you can see the white happening. This is because uh, it's actually forming ammonium chloride in the air through the reaction of the two dissolved gases in solution. So we will now add 200 milliliters of this ammonia. And you can see it's yellow due to the dye, but um, it has formed ammonium chloride now. So now all that we must do is mix this around quite well and then heat up our solution and boil it down. I'll show you what to do after we've done that. Okay, so as we begin to heat this up, um, we're just uh, simply going to boil this down until it's totally dry. We'll then be left with a yellow powder due to the impurities, which we will, we will then recrystallize out with water, losing some of our product, but obtaining a very nice pure product. So, first we have to fight, figure out how much ammonium chloride we actually got, so I'll just let this boil all the way down to complete dryness. So I'll meet you back when that's been done. Okay, so I boiled it down a bit too far, well I boiled everything down, but um, it got a bit too hot on the bottom and uh, slightly charred the bottom of it, um, and that might just be the uh, color just de uh, decomposing, the color that was in the ammonium hydroxide, because um, ammonium chloride does not decompose till uh, over 300 degrees Celsius. I do, do not believe that I actually reached that, but then again, I'm not totally sure. Anyhow, so regardless of what you do, I just added a 100 milliliters of water to re-dissolve as much as possible. Anything that's insoluble will then be uh, uh, filtered off. And so I'm going to go ahead and take this, and now that it's like this, we'll filter it off. This will leave us with our solution um, without any solid impurities, and then we can do a recrystallization out of this. So I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But the first thing to do is filter this off. So I'm going to go ahead and filter this off. Okay, so after filtering, you can see we're left with all the black gunk, and then our solution down below. Now, when I washed out my beaker, um, I realized what the main contaminant was. It was actually dish soap. The dish soap is most likely what decomposed to form this ugly black goop. Apparently the uh, ammonia I had bought also contains dish soap, which is really not very useful. So if when you go looking for ammonium hydroxide in the store, try to find one without dish soap. However, if you, it is only dish soap or whatever, um, that's totally fine because a recrystallization will get rid of most of that. And the second one will definitely get rid of all of it. 
Anyhow, so what we're going to have to now do is transfer this solution back to the beaker and boil it down, but watch it extremely carefully. As soon as we start to see any crystals forming or a little crust of solid material forming on top, then we must immediately take it off heat and let it cool down. Um, this will let crystals of ammonium, um, ammonium chloride precipitate out of solution which we can then collect. So um, I'm going to go ahead and transfer it to here, boil it till we start seeing some solid chunks of something, and then uh, go ahead and take it off for the recrystallization to occur. Okay, so after I boiled it down to uh, quite a fair bit less, um, as soon as I started to see crystals forming on the surface, I immediately took it off heating and put it in the fridge to fully precipitate everything. And you can see we're with, that we're left with a slurry of crystals which are um, rather dark colored because of the contaminants. But that's okay, because we're going to wash them and clear this up. So we're going to go ahead and take a filter, such as a coffee filter here, and pour out all of the crystals into the coffee filter. And then I'll scoop the rest out with a spatula and put them in also. Now you could wash this with water, which would work. However, this um, ammonium chloride is much more soluble in water than some of the other common things it's soluble in. Um, and something that would be very excellent, which I don't currently have, is diethyl ether, which I do plan on making in a future video, because this is insoluble in diethyl ether, ammonium chloride is. However, it's only 3 grams per 100 milliliters of um, methanol that this ammonium chloride is soluble in, so I'm going to be actually um, getting rid of uh, all that discolored impurities using some methanol. So this is just methyl hydrate, which is another name of methanol, which can be bought at a place such as Canadian Tire as a uh, fuel. So this stuff is toxic, um, so do not ingest it as it can make you go blind if you drink over, I believe, 10 milliliters of it. So do not ingest this at all. I will be putting on gloves. And yeah, so yeah, exactly what we're going to do is simply put all the crystals in here. And I do want to save this um, methanol because I always uh, recycle it through distillation, so I'll filter it into a separate container to save. So I'll transfer the rest of the crystals here, and then show you how to wash it with methanol. Okay, so I simply transferred the uh, filter paper and our um, ammonium chloride um, to a separate jar which we will be storing this um, methanol in. And I've just added a bit to the beaker to wash out any of the remaining stuff. So I'll swirl that around and pour it all in. This is going to start removing all of that horrible color, but hopefully all of our ammonium chloride, or at least most of it, will stay in the filter and be nice and clear. So we'll do a couple washings with methanol and just save the methanol. We can always redistill this off if you have a distillation apparatus to reclaim the methanol, as you don't want to spend copious amounts of money on more methanol. So we'll do one more washing just to make sure that all that nice... Um, or so we have nice clear ammonium chloride crystals and not that ugly brown color and uh, yeah although methanol isn't extremely expensive to buy by any means so if you do just um, keep purchasing it it all should also be okay so um, we'll just let that finish filtering off and um, we'll see what type of crystals we got and because we did use methanol which has a fairly low boiling point this will evaporate fairly quickly in the air, so you must store it in an airtight container such as this canning jar. Um, but the other benefit of that is that our crystals are going to um, dry very quickly as the methanol will rapidly evaporate out. So I'll put these off into a separate dish to crystallize out and put a cap on our methanol solution. And I'll meet you back in a moment. Okay, so after filtering off, um, I just put it on some paper towel to help absorb some of that methanol and let the rest evaporate away. And I, my camera makes it look slightly pink, but in reality they look very white with just maybe a slight offset of color. A, th a third recrystallization using water could be done if necessary, if you needed to obtain super pure results. But for what I'm going to be using this for, which is making nitrous oxide or dinitrogen monoxide, this is uh, fine purity. And um, so anyhow, I'll let this finish up uh, drying, and then we'll weigh it and see exactly how much we got. Okay, so I zeroed out the container with our um, ammonium chloride in it, and uh, added the ammonium chloride, and you can see we're left with about 8 grams. Now, this isn't a huge amount, but I also wasn't planning on making a huge amount, because um, all I need it for is to make a bit of dinitrogen monoxide, which um, this would be plenty to make enough for the barking dog reaction. Now, um, I can't calculate a percent yield because I do not have a, an, any clue of what the concentration of ammonia might be, so um, I'm not totally sure about that, 
Um, and there was a lot of impurities in the ammonia. I highly recommend trying to find pure ammonia that says 100% pure ammonia with nothing except for ammonia gas dissolved into water. And no soap, no colorants, and nothing else. Because it just makes the whole process a lot more complicated. Anyhow, so that's basically how to make ammonium chloride. And you can see we're left with a nice white powder. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Wait, bye.